Payday, payday. Canelo Alvarez reiterates Jamal Charlo, David Benavidez, Demetrius Andrade. They need to fight each other before he considers fighting the winner of all of them fighting. Stay tuned to this video. In less than a minute, I will break down this very subject. You don't want to miss it. Subscribe to the channel. Ah, be back. Yo, what up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, Canelo Alvarez was in the crowd, San Diego. He has a home out in San Diego, and his fighter just lost. His fighter was on the card in San Diego, lost to a great fighter, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez, and he was in attendance supporting his Canelo Promotions fighter, Julio Cesar Martinez. I mean, even though it didn't, his support and, you know, whatever tutelage didn't help because Chocolatito is a historic fighter in that weight class and he ended up beating him in that fight now canelo was interviewed by DAZN, the company he chose to work with over premier boxing champions for a uh, reported over a hundred million dollars for De demetrius or not demetrius jamal charlo and david lemieux let's hear what canelo had to say and then i'll be back with some of my thoughts Roll a clip. Do you want to see them, though, fight each other to figure something out? Oh. How much do you want to see them, though, fight each other to figure something out? Like I say, I know they went up a day, right? They went up a day, but uh, I'm, I'm, I, I really don't understand they, why they don't fight each other. They need to fight each other, and then I, I fight the, the winner of all, all of them. I don't fucking care. So he says, I don't effing care. Well, apparently Canelo Alvarez does care because he has never before put any type of uh, Super 6 tournament or this tournament gauntlet style proposition before any other person that he was considering fighting. So that speaks volumes. Hopefully you guys with my subtitles were able to understand everything clearly. And for starters, this is this is one thing that in my opinion is corrupting boxing is you have people leading in with questions they have leading and almost persuasive questionings in line of questioning instead of like my thing is this if you truly want the answer to a question and you want to be fair and unbiased don't lead in with the question don't have these persuasive leading questions what do i mean by this so the disowned reporter, listen to what he says. How much do you want to see them, though, fight each other to figure something out? How much do you want to see them, though, fight each other yeah. oh, to no. figure something out? So you're already steering the conversation in a particular direction. And then Canelo, of course, like he has in past recent interviews, he just went along with it and said, oh, yeah, that's right. They need to fight each other, yada, yada, yada. But in my opinion from a journalistic standpoint, just ask a regular open-ended question. Say, hey, Jamal Charlo, David Benavidez, whoever else, Demetrius Andre want to fight you. What do they need to do to get you? And then let Canelo come up with it as opposed to framing it and phrasing it as, hey, don't you want to see them? Boom, boom, boom. Do you guys get what I'm saying? If you don't get what I'm saying, let me know in the comment section. If you do understand what I'm saying, let me know that in the comment section. But we see this a lot. It's like people leading in with questions. And that's because in boxing, there is a lot of bias. And there's a lot of people who can't separate their emotions from the sport of boxing. And they almost want the athlete or the, the pro fighter to respond in a certain way. So they throw out that softball question. Hey, don't you want to see charlo and, and benavidez fight each other so they could pitch that narrative right what 
do you want to see them, though, fight each other to figure something out? Oh, like I say, I know they win the payday, right? They win the payday, but... Uh... And it, it's funny because even though Canelo came up with the, the payday, the payday, payday, I feel like my channel has popularized that in my Canelo videos that I've done where I've said, payday, payday, you want pay? And now he's like, it's like he watched the video, and he's, he's using it, and it's like becoming a tagline, so... That's pretty funny. I think English speaking Canelo is on. Uh, he switched on at all times. So I like that about Canelo. Um, him speaking English, I do think is it just makes it fun and more people can <clears throat> get his message and see his personality. So that's one thing I do. But I mean, at the end, he said, I don't effing care. But apparently he does, because my thing is this. Why does Canelo Alvarez all of a sudden have prerequisites for what fighters need to do to get him? But never before was this the case that any fighter had to do what he's asking Andre and Charlo and Benavidez to do. Um, I'm, I, I really don't understand they, why they don't fight each other. They need to fight each other. And then I, I fight the, the winner of all, all of them. I don't fucking care. So the, the other flaw with what Canelo is saying is... I don't understand why they won't just fight each other. Hmm. Hmm. Well, for starters, let's analyze and unpack what Canelo's saying. Why won't they fight each other? Jamal Charlo is a guy who's not even at 168. So I know the Canelo fans want Canelo to not fight Jamal Charlo and not fight David Benavidez. And they instead want them to fight each other like Canelo's requesting. But truth be told, Jamal Charlo is a champion at 160, right? David Benavidez is a former two-time champion at 168. Yeah, of course, that would be a good fight if Charlo and Benavidez did fight each other. But Canelo keeps painting this picture as if, hey, they need to be fighting each other. And they're not even in the same weight class. These are two names that Showtime boxing premier boxing champions and the fans want to see you fight and offered you a fight from that particular entity premier boxing champions so you instead and in turn flip it and say they need to fight each other but in reality showtime pitched a hundred million plus dollar deal to you because they have a stable of people in or around your division that they think are good and marketable fights for you to take. So it, this this whole Canelo uh, movement or narrative about they need to fight each other is all too convenient and it's hilarious considering the fact they're not in the same weight category, right? Again, the only reason Charlo would move up to 168 to fight Canelo is because that's a big fight and of course he's going to he's be he'll be willing to move up to 168 but if he can't get a fight that lures him out I don't know what his plans are I don't know if he stays at 160 he's not the bottom line is Charlo's not currently at 168 but of course anybody would move up for a, a big fight I mean if if Robert Guerrero was at 147 and Manny Pacquiao was at 154 and he got the opportunity of course he's going to move up and be ready for that opportunity you know what i'm saying it's just common sense so canelo he's feeling himself and he feels that he's the king of the hill and he keeps saying everybody wants a payday payday but it just it sounds ridiculous because at the end of the day i'm a consumer i know what i want i like david benavidez shakur stevenson if you look at his twitter just yesterday said he really likes and digs david benavidez he speaks spanish he speaks english he's mexican and ecuadorian and american right mexican american and it's a fight it's an entertaining fight i also like the jamal charlo fight for canelo he's trying to pawn him off so they can try to destroy each other and then he could pick off the winner because that would be a tough fight presumably for charlo and a tough fight for david benavidez so he wants to tenderize them and they got to fight and go through these grueling fight when the, the reality is pbc they want to do business with you or wanted to do business with you. And these are the guys that they feel would be interesting and compelling fights for 
their audience or for the audience of boxing. And he's trying to switch it and, and tell the world that they need to fight each other. As far as Demetrius Andrade, that's a laughable that he you're saying, why don't they fight each other? Why doesn't Andre fight each other? Because he's been on the same side that Canelo has had probably seven, eight fights now, or, you know, leading right around there with the Bevo fight. And he's been in the same weight class for a second time and is about to be for a third time with uh, the Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. And Canelo has never fought Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. So he's telling all them guys to do basically do a super six, super three round robin and fight each other. But he's not putting these restraints or prerequisites on nobody else. So what does that say about Mr. Canelo? What does that say? What is that telling you about him? You know, why is this a thing when the two biggest fights that he can probably make? And if you ever think that I'm wrong, prove me wrong. Let me know what is a bigger fight sales wise. Not like, oh, Dimitri Bevo is a tougher fight or your opinions, because the reality with that argument is we don't know what a tougher fight is until he fights each and every one of those people. You can surmise and say that Bevo is the toughest fight, but you truly don't know that because he hasn't fought any of them. He hasn't fought Bevo, nor Charlo, nor Benavides. So you can't say that some people predicted Manny Pacquiao would be able to beat Floyd Mayweather and knock him out. They fought. It didn't happen. So I don't care about a fight prediction in terms of uh, what's the most challenging because we don't really know until he fought those people. But based on past metrics, I think it's uh, very safe to assume that the people on the left and right of Canelo in this picture that you guys see would be the, the highest and most marquee fights and the best financial successes that he can fight because these are guys that people want to see Canelo fight and they have American audiences that are checking for him, right? And Canelo knows this, but he wants them to off each other rather than fight him. So it's just, to me, it's just a bad look for Canelo Alvarez. He never once told Caleb Smith, hey, fight Billy Joe Saunders. Or Danny Jacobs, fight Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Smith, and Demetrius Andrade, and I'll come pick off the winner. But conveniently, you get a deal, and now you need to justify why you didn't take the deal for more money why you didn't take the deal versus charlo that everybody's wanted to see you fight since 154 why you didn't take the deal with a beast like david benavides and why you're headed on on the way should you guys win to fight against a 40 year old triple g so canelo's fans and the canelo man fans they need something to believe in they need to find some way to explain away why canelo didn't choose this fight and the irony is this, is you oftentimes see or hear old media say like, oh, Charlo was exposed in his last fight. This They do this particularly with black fighters. For example, Charlo had a, a decently tough fight with Montiel. I thought he got tired more than anything. But people said, oh, he was so, see, he looked so bad. So you would think that Canelo, based on his patterns, this would be the best time to fight Charlo but he didn't choose Charlo. So you got to ask yourself some serious questions. People are saying Bevel is much tougher than Charlo. So why would you take a tougher fight, right? That happens to be much, much smaller, trapped on the app, as opposed to fighting on pay-per-view against a guy who's easier to beat and produces a massive mega event that is bigger. That doesn't even make sense. There's nobody going to take a more laborious and daunting task and do it for less money than do it for less money than you could have took an easier task for more money. So, you know, the walls are closing in for Canelo. He's trying to shoo off David Benavidez. I think he truly resents the, the pressure that is amounting and growing with these guys' names, and he's saying, hey, you guys fight each other. But again, how come Avni Yudrum didn't have to fight Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Smith? Or f how come they didn't have to fight each other? Caleb Plant didn't have to fight all these guys. But th the fight that, in my opinion, and I think it's very justifiable if you disagree, 
you can leave that in the comment section. The the biggest fight, the most financially lucrative fight here in the States for Canelo Alvarez, those are the ones you conveniently say they got to fight each other, right? And and some of which people have wanted to see you got you fight guys like Andrade and Charlo since the 154 days. And he's saying, oh, I don't care. Okay, why, why would you even consider Golovkin? If you're not doing, if Canelo's not doing what I'm saying he's doing, why is Golovkin an option? You said he has nothing to offer a couple years ago. You said that he looked horrible and lost to Dervinchenko and you have nothing to prove with him. So again, like I keep saying, I truly believe Canelo's a good fighter, but I think Canelo is a diva because look at how he's moving. He says Golovkin wasn't worthy. The whole time, DAZN wanted this fight that you see on the screen. Hey, no, guys, hey, Max. DAZN wanted the fight. He was, at the time, trying to fight Avni Yildrim, and DAZN was like, I'm not paying for this. And then he ended up suing Golden Boy and getting out of his contract, getting out of DAZN contract, and then they end up accepting the Yildrim fight because Canelo was a free agent, and he could have escaped and went to top rank or went to PBC, so he kind of had him by the ball, so to speak, pause. And that's what happened. But if you go back and do all the research, and, and nowadays when you speak the truth, people say you're hating and all that. But if I wanted to hate, I wouldn't be truthful. I would just make things up about people. Canelo said Triple G is not worth his time. There, there's no meaning in the fight, et cetera, et cetera. And he should have lost to... Derevinchenko. Now all of a sudden he wants to fight a 40 year old Triple G who's regressed. And then meanwhile, he's telling a guy who looks like a monster that would make for a bigger fight like David Benavidez or Charlo, who's another great fighter, saying, hey, why they want a payday for me? But he just said, Canelo just said he'll fight Usman, a UFC fighter. So it just please Canelo man fans, explain how David Benavidez has to earn his keep and Charlo, they need to fight each other. And this is what we're going with in the world of boxing. But Usman, who has zero boxing fights, he says, why not? And more directly related boxing fights, guys like Avni Yudrum, he didn't have to fight Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Plant, or he didn't even have to have a recent fight. He hadn't fought in two years. He didn't have to be coming off a win, and he got the Canelo fight. Guys like Billy Joe Saunders looked pathetic in some of their recent fights before Canelo. They didn't have to do nothing extra. But the two perceived very tough fights that happened to be the biggest fights, they got to do all this extra stuff and go through this obstacle course. It's just laughable. And Canelo's clearly listening to old media and reading the comments, and he's basically, you know, telling his fans, blowing the dog whistle, and telling them, hey, back me up on this. Back me up on this. And... That's the calling card. All this, oh, they need to fight each other. This, it, I would respect it if everybody had to do this. Dimitri Bivol, why didn't he have to fight Zordo Ramirez? Why didn't Dimitri Bivol have to fight against Better Biv and earn his respect and all this stuff? But Charlo and Andre do. And that's, what, that's the narrative we're going with. It's laughable. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. We unpack. Subscribe. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live boxing ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. The future is now. The Hibernation Fives by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation Fives adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation Fives, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy, 
I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster.